today we're going to look at a woman by the name of Sarai, or you might know her better as Sarah. And it's interesting that uh, how God can change his, change his people. How many of you believe God changes people? Well, Sarai, her, that name in, in the Hebrew actually means argumentative or contentious. But God, as she continued to walk with him, changed her name to princess, all right? So we're going to be talking about the faith of God's princess, but I don't want any guys tuning me out today. This is not about tiaras and cute little Disney dresses, all right? This is about faith in the very real world. Are you ready for the word? Amen? Who's ready for the word? Say, bring it on. All right, Hebrews 11, verse 11 says this, By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, wow, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Can we pray today? Would you just lift your hands to the Lord for a moment? Heavenly Father, we receive, God, your word today with hearts that are open, believing, God. And Lord, I pray, Lord, as with a humble spirit and heart, Lord, I take your word and I, and I reach out and I pray your word would touch your people today. I pray, God, it would be your fingerprints upon them as they leave here, full of life, full of faith, and full of courage. In Jesus' name, amen. I have discovered that Sarah, Sarai, is one of the most misunderstood ladies in the Bible. She gets a bad rap many times. Uh, let me tell you a few things that she did. How about this? Telling a little half-truth that she's just Abram's sister when really she was his full husband, right? Giving Hagar to Abram to have a child you know, for her. And then her dealing harshly with Hagar when Hagar got feeling very proud and then asking Hagar and her son to leave with really very little as far as this world's goods is concerned and, and even laughing at the promise of God. So there's kind of some controversial things about Sarai that in today's culture we probably just don't understand very good. But we're also going to look at how her faith caused her to become the princess that God had designed that she would be. Now, I'll tell you, there are more verses that speak of Sarah than any other woman in the entire Bible. How many of you think we need to know about this woman? I do. I do. And she's obviously of great importance. And we're going to discover that like you and me, her faith wasn't perfect. Her life wasn't perfect. Uh, she was not an absolutely flawless person. But I'm going to tell you, she finds herself here in Hebrews chapter 11 among some of the great men and other women of faith. And so she's commended as an example for us. And I'll tell you, the New Testament writers, when they talked about Sarah, they did not look at uh, you know any of the negative things that she did, the struggles in her life. No, they actually commend Sarah as someone to be followed, someone to be emulated. And, and so let me just go over to 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verse, verses number 5 and 6. The word says this, For in this manner in former times the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, and I wanted to get to this part, it's talking about Sarah, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Wow. Whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. So the word of God commends Sarah, right? Look what it says of her. It says she was a holy woman. She trusted in God. She was submissive to her husband. Even obeyed Abraham and even called him Lord. Wow. What a wife. Now, for years I've tried to get Jereen to call me Lord. Hadn't worked out too well. Uh, how many of you know you can't build a doctrine on three simple words in the Scripture? 
But uh, anyway, I, I, guys, I, I don't recommend that. It might not be of your benefit to try to uh, do that as well. But at any rate, what I'm saying is that in all the New Testament, there's not one negative word about Sarah. Do you know what that tells me? This is what it tells me, that God is in the business of forgetting some of the things that we do, and He's in the business of remembering the good things that we do. Aren't you glad for that? Come on, somebody. Amen. Can we just put our hands together for the Lord this morning. Is there anybody that's happy that as eternity unfolds, the negative things that you've done in life are going to fade away and the good things are going to be remembered on and on? Amen. Now, Sarai, as she was known, then followed her husband as, uh, you know, as they together left their homeland. And I can only imagine myself in Abram's shoes telling my wife, Jereen, Jereen, we're going to move. And she would say, well, okay, where are we going? I don't know. Well, is it going to be warm there or cold? What do I pack? I'm not sure. Well, how, where is it we're going to be at? I don't have any idea. How many of you know it took a lot of faith for Sarah to follow a guy like that? And she followed Abraham, and uh, they left the land where they were at, and, 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 and God had shown Abraham two things, gave him two promises, right? God had told Abram that I'm going to give you a land for you and your descendants. How many of you believe and know that the land of Israel belongs to Israel? Come on. I want a good hand for that. I believe in that with all of my heart. God gave it to Abram and his descendants. And, and by the way, he also said that God would take Abram and make him into a great nation. And so in order for that to happen, Abram would have to have children. So here's the thing. When, when Abram and left uh, the Ur of the Chaldees with Sarah, Sarai as her name was then, uh, she, he was 75 years old. She was 65. They hadn't had any children yet, right? And uh, so, so uh, they've been married probably for some time, but had never, she had never been able to conceive. And, of course, those first years of following God, God blessed them immensely. Uh, the Scripture tells us that Abram was actually very rich in silver and gold and cattle, but God did not bless Sarai with a child. And this is where Sarai's life and your life and my life, they kind of intersect this morning, all right? You see, Sarah knew the promise. The promise was that Abram would become a great nation. She knew that God had said that to her husband. I will make you into a great nation. And I believe that she wanted that for her husband. She wanted it for herself. But what happened was the years kept ticking by one after another. And, uh, you know, the promise wasn't coming to pass because she was barren and could not, pers and could not conceive. And so for her, she knew she was an integral part of God's plan, but it just seemed like the promise eluded her for years. And I wonder today if there's anybody here in this house this morning that you feel like the Lord has given you a promise, but it hasn't happened yet. Come on. You've wanted something, you've desired something, you had a dream, you had a hope, you had a desire. It's not that you haven't believed in the Lord, it's not that you haven't obeyed the Lord, it's not that you don't love Him, it just seems like your timing and God's timing aren't in sync. Is there anybody that's honest enough to say, yeah, that's me, I've, I've, I've wanted God to do some things, I've seen the promise, but I haven't received it just yet. Maybe you're believing God for someone's salvation, or maybe you're trusting that God, that He will bring you know, someone into your life as a spouse, or maybe you're believing for healing and it hasn't come yet, or maybe you're praying for your children to have a real genuine experience with the Lord, or, or a reconciliation that hasn't happened, or a promotion, or something like that. I mean, have you ever prayed and you just felt like the answer was delayed? Come on. You wanted to see it. You wanted to have it right then, but it seemed like, you know, you, you sought the Lord. You, you stood on the Word. You rebuked the devil. You fought a good fight. You did all four preach points that the preacher talked about that one Sunday, and yet still it hasn't happened yet. And Sarah had to wait not five or ten or fifteen or twenty. Twenty-five years she had to wait. Now, we know God's in control, right? 
And uh, in this situation, God wasn't saying no. What God was saying was wait and trust me. Now, I've got a question. Is there anybody in here who likes to wait? Who likes to wait? Nobody likes to wait. No, waiting in line, waiting in traffic in Houston, waiting on your income tax check. I mean, I sometimes am standing there at the, you know, the coffee pot saying, okay, come on, I need some coffee. Do I have a witness in that? I mean, that's important, right? Coffee's important to some of us, all right? Uh, so, so we don't like to wait. So let's pick up the story, okay? About 10 years later, Abram and Sarai have traveled around and God has blessed them financially. They've been to Egypt, Lot and, 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 and Abram have parted ways. And, and now what we discover is Abram is 85 and Sarah is 75. Okay. And what I've got for you today is some powerful advice from Sarah's life. All right. You could call these lessons or principles, but I'll tell you, when the promise is delayed,